and welcome back to the Harvey Norman Lounge Vet Dr Alex Melrose. How Thank are you? you? I'm good. Excellent. We're going to talk about arthritis, uh, cats and dogs yeah. with arthritis. How can you tell if they are suffering from arthritis? Yeah, it's a great question because they tend to hide their pain a lot more than in us sort of... Uh, Whinging humans. humans. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. So you've got to look at other things. You've got to look at postural changes uh, and often behavioural changes as well. So if their temperament is a little bit out, that can be a clue that something's going wrong. Yeah. So is it true that they don't actually show us pain as much, our little pets? Yeah, they, they, they'll... It's sort of a survival instinct, I believe, where it, it advantages them to not show any weakness. No, you know? My dog, she's a wonderful so-and-so. Yeah. Yeah. Well, she's probably been... In brought a up pain. a certain way oh. to... What are you, you implying, know, Alex? To, uh, <laughs> nothing at all, nothing at all. Let's go back to arthritis here. Let's okay. talk so about your So don't show pets. us their pain, so should we should take them in for an x-ray to see if something's actually going on. Yeah, yeah, so we can, as a vet, we can we can figure things out a bit more easily. I say, yeah. You know. Yeah, okay. so we, we can take x-rays and also we, we'll manipulate the animal a lot more and, and isolate areas of pain, see where their muscles are reacting and spasming and things like that. Does it get worse in the cold? Yeah, it does, yeah. That's not a fallacy. It, often you'll find that... Um, it's particularly in large breed dogs, they'll, they'll literally freeze up a bit more, you know, in the winter, and they'll get a lot stiffer and a bit, bit more sort of um, reluctant to jump up and get out and do exercise. So, what actually is arthritis? Well, it's a degeneration of the joint surfaces. So, you can have um, cartilage pieces breaking off and floating around inside the joint. You can um, get a roughness to the edge of the bones. Um, in some situations, like in the spine, you can get little pieces of disc. Um, degenerating and fracturing out, so it's it's a roughness in an area where where things are meant to be you know articulating smoothly, and pressure on nerves, pressure on on bone, pressure on tissues causes that pain, and then um, it's up to us to try and alleviate that as best we can. You know? Is it is it a common thing for dogs and cats to get? Yep, it's really common. I mean, especially now that the average lifespan of dogs and cats is extended out to over ten years. Well. You know, there's a lot more time for things like that to go wrong. Um, and so we'll see it in, in Burmese cats a lot and um, large breed dogs. So it's a breed thing as well, sort of yeah. more common in some breeds? Yeah, yeah. So there's a genetic component where they're, they're perhaps right from birth, they're more likely to, to have a problem like that. But is yeah. it more, more so with big dogs or little dogs as well? Well, my dog, you know, as you know, Prince is a griffin. Oh, yeah. And they're a little bit prone to spinal um, arthritis. So that, he hasn't got that, but a lot of his um, fellows have. And on the other end of the size of dog scale, you know, big dogs like Great Danes and stuff, they yeah. just have so much weight going through their joints and, and smashing around yeah. that they're a lot more prone to that sort of thing, yeah. That makes sense. Uh, what can you do then to alleviate the symptoms naturally, for starters? Yeah, well... Look, same as in humans, really. You can you can look at glucosamine. You can look at uh, fish oils. You can give them supplements. Yeah, you can give them really good, safe supplements like that. Controlling weight is number one. So if if you've got a dog that's you know ten or twenty percent overweight and you get it get it healthier and get it lighter, sometimes that's enough to take away nearly all the pain just wow. by just by itself. Really? Yeah. yeah. And what about you as a vet? What can you actually prescribe for a dog? Yeah, so we'll, we'll use, um, we've got all sorts of stuff really when you think about it. We, we've got the traditional sort of non-steroidal anti-inflammatories, like a, a human equivalent of a Voltaren, mm -hmm. and, and that'll, that'll drop swelling down and drop pain levels down. Um, but we've also got some other interesting things like um, glycosaminoglycan injections, which is like a, a supplement for the joint surface but it's given as an, an injectable form. Okay. Uh, and that can, be, that can be quite useful. And in fact, stem cell therapy can be quite good as well. Really? Yeah. What's involved with that? Well, we inject a stem cell activating factor into the animal and it stimulates the body to produce more of its own stem cells. That sounds expensive. No, it's not too bad. Yeah. It's like, I think it's maybe $200 a, a treatment. Okay. Um, so again, a lot cheaper than a lot of human yeah. treatments I can think of. If you're giving them something like the dog or cat equivalent of Voltaren, is there anything else you should be watching out for side effect wise? Yeah. Does it hurt their yeah. stomachs? Yeah, it, exactly. Yeah, It can hurt the stomachs and it can hurt their kidneys, liver a little bit as well. So what we'll tend to do with those patients if they're on it long term is we'll do blood tests regularly, say every six months, and we'll just monitor those parameters. And if they start to shoot up suddenly, then we've got to come up with a, an alternative. You know. Another plan. Yeah. That's some great advice actually, Alex. Thank so you. The first yeah. thing is if you think your animal's suffering from arthritis, take them into the vet, get them x-rayed yes, and see yes. if that is the case. Yeah, alleviate pain. Okay, That's alleviate what we're here for. pain. I yeah. like that very much. Hey Alex, well thank you so much.
My Always pleasure. a pleasure to see you in the studio. And uh, I think great advice as well. And now to our pet of the week. Congratulations to Chloe and her teddy. $50 to spend at petpost.co.nz is on its way to your owner, Susan Liverton from Romotea. And if you'd like to enter your pet, and it can be any type of pet you want, I just upload a pic onto our Facebook page.